All right, you guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another episode with Monster Angling. Uh, we're out here today targeting some walleye. And there is a ton of different species of fish in this lake. Uh, we're gonna set up for walleye in about 20 feet of water-ish. And then we're probably gonna set up some jaw jackers for trout. There's just a smorgasbord of different species in here, like rainbows to walleyes to burbot to pike. There's like literally like 30 different species of fish in here. Are we gonna catch them all? No, obviously not. But we uh, have a couple, two spots in mind today and uh, that we're gonna try out. Um, if this spot doesn't go as planned, then we'll probably uh, move a couple miles down the lake that way. That we know of a little bit of a, a bit of a bay that uh, holds some rainbows and some huge, huge pike this time of year. I was actually out there already, had to come back and grab a battery for my sonar. Um, Where's my dad? Right there. That's my dad right over there. But as you guys can see, look how much this uh, this ice has dropped. But speaking of the ice guys, it is actually very, very sketchy right now. I shouldn't say very, but I would definitely not be driving on it right now. If you live in Saskatchewan, you probably know which lake this is, Lake Diefenbaker. We are fishing the southern end of this lake uh three days ago and it was actually plus 21 outside it isn't as hot today it is about plus eight ish but we are in the last week of ice fishing season they're getting close to there i think there's like nine days left but um this is last ice i actually when my dad and i walked out there we did uh sput our way out we did have ice picks on it is still very thick out in the middle but uh, behind me here in this trench in this channel it is not very deep or not very thick. So I don't suggest driving anywhere right now unless you're 100% sure that the ice is safe to be driving on. But anyway, guys, this intro has been insanely long. I have to grab my battery here quick. Better do that now before I forget. Right here, now I got the battery. All right, guys, so I got my flasher battery here. Did I lock the truck? Make sure, I better make sure I lock the truck here. Look at this, walking through the desert. Oh, it looks soupy up here. Take a look at that. I walked through here. I didn't realize how much I was sinking in. I'll walk around that, I guess. Don't want to get my striker suit uh, muddy. I probably, honestly, don't even need it here today, guys. I'm, uh, it's like plus eight out here today. That's why we're not uh, driving on here. You could still probably uh, take a quad, take a snowmobile, but uh, I don't know. We just, we just wanted to pack light today here. It was kind of more of a, we have a bunch of different uh, spots on this lake, so if really, if one uh, doesn't pan out, then uh, we can always just go to the other one. But that's kind of why we didn't want to bring a uh, quad, is because most of the spots that uh, we fish on this lake are uh, pretty hard to access on an, any ATV. So, wow, where's my, where's my trail? This might be fun trying to get down here. All right, you guys are uh, running on chest cam here now. But, ooh, that's not looking too good. I literally hear like melting water. Like it's like, it's literally melting like out of this cliff here. Wow, I almost biffed it on there. So guys, I'm just walking back out here to go uh, to the spot, but that's not looking very good. That's why you don't wanna be driving on here right now because the, the ice in the middle here in the middle of the channel is gonna be fine. But the ice along the edges here, where it's kinda, of, this ice wall, this, the water used to be like up here. And it's slowly been, they've been letting water out of this, this uh, reservoir. And now that all this ice is on here, it's all melting. So you're gonna have a lot of soft ice all the way along this bank here. So it's gonna be the same like at the boat launch over there. I'll, uh, I'm gonna put the camera away here for a second. I'm just gonna get out to my spot and then uh, I'll kind of show you guys what I'm using here. A couple little uh, tips and tricks. These uh, walleyes here have been feeding. I was out here a couple weeks ago with a buddy and uh, we did pretty good here. So uh, they should, we should be able to get some to bite. If not, like I said, we can go down the lake and uh, I know a couple other spots here too. Hopefully uh, we can, hit a home run on our first spot here, but if not, we always have uh, backup. So I'm gonna walk the rest of the way here down this little trail and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys when I get there. Let's go. So I have a barrel swivel tied on here now. I'll show you guys here. 
right there. And then what I'm gonna do is take my, I'll try to find some eight pound test line. Uh, I'd rather have six, but this eight will work. What I usually like to do is make it about a foot, foot and a half long. So about right here, this is a pretty big barrel swivel. Um, usually I like to carry the smaller ones. Um, you can buy a number of different sizes here. I'm not sure what size this one is, but, but then I'll just do my knot here. I'll, lots of times I'll use the Palomar, um, but what the heck is this one called? F Fisherman's knot maybe? Mm, wet it, pull it tight. Like I said, you really don't need a swivel that big. The swivel's just to keep the uh, kind of the spoon from just circling in the water. When you rip a spoon up, it kind of gets little knots in the line. So what that swivel swivel is going to do, basically, it just keeps the memory out of your line. And that right there is the perfect distance. You got about a foot and a half of uh, space between the swivel. Now I'll just take the scissors here, cut this off don't want to cut that one this one grab that piece of line don't want to litter try to cut them as close as you can basically if i'm just jigging that spoon like up and down you know how you normally jig it see how it stays nice and still that's exactly what you want you don't want that spoon to be spinning around in circles got one yeah. Oh yeah. This is a good fish. Yeah. It's exactly what I thought it was. This is a white sucker. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that guy's a short stump. That is a white sucker. Cool. Okay, we'll uh, get the hook out here. There he is. Definitely put up a good fight here, but yeah, we'll get a get a release on this guy. There he goes. <laughs> That's awesome. Barely, barely pounded on the spot, just slowly, and then it completely stopped, and then he just came and crushed it. There was multiple of them down there too, and uh, hopefully we can get uh, another one. Yeah, guys, I kind of stole my dad's hole here. He was marking a ton of fish, and he just couldn't get them to bite, so I just locked out. <laughs> I was sitting on the ice like this. That's a new species through the ice. I could say, call this video new species through the ice, but it's a sucker fish, so it's not very impressive. There was a bunch of them down there when that one hit. We caught some red horse suckers here last time. Not the white sucker variety. I'll give those suckers credit. They put up a really good fight actually. Like, almost feels like you do have a walleye or something or a white fish, not a sucker. Well, they're, the suckers are used to eating little worms and little stuff off the bottom. That's why they like that. Like, yeah, sure, you'll catch them on, uh, on a minnow too, but. Got one. On my butt. Ah! That's what I thought we were gonna catch. You should have seen that hook, Seth. Holy. Maybe I should sit on my butt more often while I'm fishing. Whoa. Better turn the big camera on quick. These guys are sure hard fish to hold on to. But there he is. Beauty. These, uh, these little red horse, we catch them a lot in the summer. If you guys uh, don't recall, we catch lots of these guys while we're uh, sturgeon fishing actually. But yeah, uh, pretty, pretty sucker actually. Probably my favorite sucker out of all of them. But uh, we'll get a release on this, this guy and hopefully catch some more. Bye-bye. Holy. That was fun. They really don't like the movement that much. As soon as you uh, you mark them, you kind of want to stay still for the most part. Maybe just jiggle those mealworms or the maggots on there, I mean. I lost a couple maggots on that last fish. Ooh, my maggots, my mealworms aren't looking so good.
If you keep care of these guys, they actually last a long time. Keep them in your pocket when it's cold out. Just put them in the fridge when you're at home. I've never really liked fishing from chairs before. Here I feel like I'm like in a really good spot because I can keep my tip low. And then I can just watch, like there's nothing really to get snagged on, you know? Yeah, this is a light action rod, as you can see. A lot of bend in it, but really soft tip, which is nice. I could really, really feel those bites and those suckers. He's coming. It's gotta be a pike. Or trout. That was huge. That was monstrous. Whatever it was, it's hard to judge on here, but it looked like it was something over seven pounds. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I think that, honestly, Dad, I don't think it was a walleye. I think it was a trout. Oh, there's a fish on me. There's a fish. Got him. That's a sucker. That was different. I was holding it still. Oh, this was all, this was on, that's, this was on before. That's, no, it just shuts off if it's not filming. Chest camera was on though. We're actually slaying the suckers. I just had a huge mark come up and chase me up, but uh, I was thinking it was either a big pike or not even necessarily a big pike, but a pike or a, uh, a trout, but definitely, definitely wasn't a sucker, but I th we were just thinking about maybe moving spots here. Maybe we'll give it a couple more minutes and then yep. see what happens. Yeah, and burbs. Burb will be there too. Yeah. Look at the scales on those things. Those suckers have giant scales on them. That time I wasn't even sitting on my butt on the ice either. <laughs> I'm fishing bottom and then I, I'm pulling them off the bottom. But I'm just kind of tapping it on the spot a little bit. And then as soon as they start showing interest, those, like I play every fish like it's a walleye or a trout, but realistically, the majority of the marks here are gonna be suckers. That's the cool thing about this lake. You really don't know what you have on until you reel it up. Well guys, the fishing has been pretty slow here. We're all kind of suckered out. So uh, I think we're gonna move down the lake here and hopefully get into some pike and walleye and maybe even some rainbow trout. Uh, the walleye should have been here. Uh, I think I actually marked a rainbow as well, but uh, my dad had a couple good bites. I had a couple good bites, but nothing else to show for it than uh, a white sucker and two red horse suckers. So I think we're going to go down there, like I said, and uh, it might be good, might uh, not be good, but you won't know unless you try. So, And we have really nothing to lose here, so we might as well go check it out, and uh, it could possibly be awesome. So. We're gonna get everything, the rest of the stuff packed up and I'll see you guys at spot number two. Coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. That's a big mark, Dad. Can you tell me why? That was big. He's still around. Mm -hmm. That was insanely large.
I don't know why he didn't bite. I'll tell you what. A fish here. Not sure what it is. I'm pretty sure it's a walleye. Yep, it's a walleye. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dad, there's more down there too. There he is, guys. Perfect eating walleye. We're going to keep this guy for sure. That is literally the perfect size walleye. I've been working for this thing all day long. All right, guys, here he is. My first walleye of the day. An absolute perfect eater. Probably... 18 19 incher but look at the, how big his eyes are like that's crazy but we we're just getting ready to pack up here we might say five more minutes just to see if we can get another one but that is the perfect eating size walleye yeah but what i was doing is if i, I was, i've been marking fish for a while like i'll kind of give it some just some jigs up high yeah. and if i start marking fish i'll put it down because they're being super picky so you just kind of slowly work it up and then usually they just sit around top of it and literally just give it a flick once in a while like and then literally just like almost it's basically just like dead sticking Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. That was a great day out there with uh, my dad. It was really awesome just getting to spend some time out there with him. And the fishing wasn't the greatest, but it was still really, uh, really cool catching those suckers. I know I'm not actually going to title this video new species through the ice because it is but it's kind of a lame species. Not going to clickbait you guys too much, but I'm actually standing here and right now as i speak um the season's closed and i have two more videos i think two more coming out uh ice fishing videos and then we're gonna be into open water but as you can see literally all the snow is pretty much melted here and uh i'm really looking forward to getting back and out do some sturgeon fishing i don't know there's a lot of species i'm going to be targeting this year but the sturgeon i had a lot of fun last year and i'm really looking forward to getting back out again but uh when we were out there the ice was starting to get a bit sketchy now i know the season's over but for you guys it depends really where you are there might still be some ice somewhere i'm not exactly sure where all you guys live but here in saskatchewan it is officially closed but you always have to be very careful when you're on the ice um there's a lot of safety videos out there i know i did one about early ice and not a lot about late ice and late ice can be just as sketchy as early ice so you have to be just as careful where your ice picks um spud everywhere you go and a very good example of why you should spud everywhere you go is i'll put a bit of a video clip in here sometime while i'm talking or after or something but it's about eight inches of ice here it's about two feet back there and literally that's like inches thick and i literally walked right up to that to check it out so we're fishing uh we never actually brought our auger to the second spot because it was a bit of a walk down a hill and um saw there's a bunch of holes out there so we were like oh we'll just spot them out and uh that's just so much easier than trying to carry that big auger around but uh went down there and yeah i spotted my way all the way across there was probably a foot foot and a half of ice pretty much everywhere in that bay um but we were fishing just gotten ready to pack up and i looked over and it looked like i was gonna try a different hole and it was probably 50 yards away and basically i walked over to the hole i spotted my way over there and then just kind of stopped spotting because like oh no i know it's pretty probably pretty safe here and i walked up no joke probably three feet away from this hole and i just kind of saw it looked really thin so i was like well it looks like a circular hole so i am going to give it a hit on the ice and i literally broke through on one hit like it was probably less than an inch thick and i spudded out this area and it was literally probably six or eight feet wide of this very sketchy ice and it's probably like a methane bubble or i don't even know what would cause that it was in about 40 feet of water though so if i would have fell through that could have most likely been the end i was wearing my floating suit but um that that is just scary guys and you always always have to check the ice um that was a bit of a wake-up call i was being safe but it was still a dangerous situation so I hope that kind of teaches you guys to always, always check the ice, especially when you're fishing lakes and reservoirs that have a bit of moving water in them, because stuff can change so quickly. But uh, 
yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I'm gonna say about that. But yeah, like I said, there's probably two more ice fishing videos coming up here. And then uh, we're, just, we're gonna be into open water. So thank you guys so much for watching once again. I uh, really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys in the next fishing adventure. Take care, guys.